Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. In case you hadn't noticed, it's the middle of 2024. What happened to the first half of the year? Anyway, I thought I would do something I haven't done before and do a mini mid-year SOTC, a half-term state of the collection, if you will. This year, finally, I've begun to sort out my collection more deliberately into boxes. I mean, that sounds pretty obvious, but for some reason it has taken me six years to come to that realization myself. At the moment, I only keep one box in the house. I keep the rest in here in my studio, which is a glorified garden shed. I've been trying to wear my more expensive watches this year to dispel that kind of nagging feeling you get that it's just money sitting in a box. So that's my top box. That's the one that's in the house. Then I have my memory box, my microbrand box, my AliExpress box, my Casio box, and my Seiko box. That's kind of how my collection is at the moment, and it fits fairly neatly into those six boxes. And... Stephen and I have been doing a number of watch fairs recently as Erebus, and we were at a Sydney collaboration pop-up event with Time and Tide a couple of weeks ago, and I saw a watch on somebody's wrist, and I fell slightly in love with it. I might therefore have a new Grail watch. Now, that is not a term I use often, so you know and I know that when I use it, it's kind of serious. So I thought I'd very quickly go through each of those six boxes today, followed by a bit of a discussion at the end of the video about this new grail. And I need your advice. If I tried to buy it, it would probably be twice as much money as I've ever spent on a watch before. I don't know if I'm prepared to do that at the moment, or if I did, I would end up feeling that it was just more money sitting in a watch box. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you've been through a similar scenario before and what you did about it. Did you splurge? Did you buy the watch? Did you consolidate and then buy the watch? Or did you kind of reframe yourself and enjoy the collection you already had? It's a tricky one. Let's flip the camera and get into the first box. All right, the top box, all of my big hitters. And you know what? I look in here and I'm like, man, there's a bit of meat in this box. There's a bit of money in this box. And then I remember there's also nine years in this box end to end. For example, Breitling Navitimer 01 from 2015. This was a gift to me from my father on my last milestone birthday. More on that later. Likewise, the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra, this is a 2017 model. It was a gift to me from my wife, who was at the time my girlfriend, but became my fiance because it was her engagement gift to me. Oris Diver 65, there's been one of these guys floating around my collection since at least 2018. Uh, what is next? I think I picked up this particular Square G, the Bluetooth uh, solar version in 2020, maybe 2021. 2022, when I finished my PhD, finished 10 years of full-time study, I treated myself by buying Mr. X's used Black Bay 58. Tail end of 2022, I got my Citizen Chronomaster. This one, to be honest, still has dominated my wrist time in 2024. This year, beginning of the year, Grand Seiko, again, lightly used. Both the Chronomaster and the Grand Seiko were both lightly used from Japan. And the Hamilton, the PSR, I like this. I know it got a hard time when I reviewed it, but there's a lot of history in this one. It's a great watch. I do wear it quite a bit. So this is the big box. I've been wearing these on rotation with others, obviously, for the last five, six months or so. I've been thinking maybe it's time to change. I've got a lovely box full of micros. I think I will probably switch, leave these ones in a safe place and bring the micros into the house. I keep this box on my bedside cabinet type thing so that I've got something to, to swap watches in. But a fantastic, fantastic little collection in itself. All of these boxes are mini collections in and of themselves. All right, in the first of two Super 70s orange and brown Wolf 10 boxes, it's the memory box, or at least it's kind of half the memory box, AKA the broken Omega section. This is the Omega Prebond, the Seamaster 200, that I walloped to death about a decade ago, haven't repaired it since, but I did take the battery out, by the way. This is the Seamaster Genève that has never properly worked. It does run, but it runs ridiculously fast. Again, that's a project for the 12th of Never. My granddad's Cami, beautiful little thing, but again, I got the crystal replaced incorrectly, unfortunately. I did, however, manage to replace the battery in this 
little 34mm Seamaster quartz that I wore from the mid 90s to the early noughties. And the Casio W10, the first watch that I can remember owning back in the 80s, this one is not that one, but this one I got from a Spanish dealer maybe five, six years ago now. It has never left the house. It's a safe Jenny Casio. On the bottom row, the beautiful, stunning, simple three-hand manual wine vintage Doxa that Michael Bolton restored just for me. To Tony Airmaster that I put together last year, I think, Ronda R150 in the back of that, got the case from AliExpress, nice little artisan strap on it, and a couple of Tissot PRXs. There are a few watches that I keep because they are benchmarks. They are absolutely the standouts in their field. The PRX is one such watch. I do like this uh, rose gold brushed version 40 mil. And I recently picked up, if you saw that video, the 35 mil PRX digital. People hate these, but I think the 35 makes a lot of sense. Kind of all utility of a Casio for not much more than the price of a Casio. Plus it's got a decent bracelet that won't pull your hair, sapphire crystal, etc, etc. And... Boulevard, Devil Diver GMT. This one's on a shaky nail. I did try to sell it not long after it came in the house, but nobody wanted it at the price I had it listed for, so I kept it. I do love the full loom dial though. Very, very comfy in integrated rubber strap. I'll probably keep this one as a kind of holiday watch. Makes sense because it's a GMT. Bit of a luxury to have this much money sitting around waiting for my next foreign holiday though, I'll grant you. So box number two, Memories and a couple of big brands. Again, a very nice little selection here. Some of these pieces on the bottom row do make it out of the house occasionally. The top row, not so much anymore. I think most of these guys have done their time. Next up in the second wolf, it is the micro box. Obviously a big part of my collection, big part of my channel over the last seven years, micro brands. And now as a micro brand owner myself, a big part of my life. But like the AliExpress box, it's a box that I have to prune regularly. Otherwise it would just get out of control this box. Like the AliExpress box, I try and restrict myself to one per brand. So Momentum C Quartz was wearing this one last weekend. Really, really enjoy this watch and it's quartz, always at the right time, usually at the right date as well. Flukes 001, really, really sweet little watch. I'm looking forward to seeing what this brand does next because their first watch, killer retro style, acrylic crystal to boot, Dorenzo, one of my favorite micros. This is the DRZ02R. I said at the time, a future classic. Nothing has changed my mind, particularly in this burnt orange color. And I chose the no date version myself. Easy watch just to pop on, give it a wine set at the time and you're off. Z Loss Mako Bronze Meteorite. I've had this one for years, love taking this one on holiday with me. I've refreshed the bronze a couple of times, this one going absolutely nowhere. You know, I reviewed a lot of Z Loss over the years, but this one somehow has just resonated with me the most, so I kept it. Decla. Kept in the collection because it's a cracking watch. This is a Marine National, a genuine Marine National strap with a loom center section. Plus it has my channel logo, a little vanity exercise on the bottom there. I haven't looked at a deck in about four years, but that's about to change. I've got one of their Bauhaus models on the way being made just for me currently. Vario, again, one of the micros that made my top 50 micro. How many of micros have made that list? Yeah, quite a few of the ones here. Love this. I think it's one of their best models, their Empire GMT, the Miyota 9075, forehand Japanese, high beat, looks cracking as well in that kind of minty color version and Vario always do a good strap. The Benchmark, the Helm Vanuatu. A watch that really, like the PRX, kind of has to be in here because when I reviewed this one, it just blew me away. And when I started my own micro brand, this watch was firmly, firmly in my sights because it is just so epically good. Formex, I love Formex and I particularly love this one. This is their Essence Legera, the most expensive watch in this box by some margin, but then again, it does have a titanium movement holder, ceramic bezel, carbon fiber case, ratcheting system, suspension system on the, the case itself as well. Fantastic, I call it my posh G-Shock. It's got that kind of rough and tumble feel, super light as well. Phoebus, a watch 
brand that didn't make my top 50 micros. Again, I've reviewed a ton of Phoebus, but not for a while. They tend to be a bit hit or miss. This one was definitely a hit though. Eagle Ray GMT and Quartz, not a lot of Quartz GMTs, but I've always liked this one. Great case shape, case size, comfy Tropic. And finally, I think the newest watch into this box, it's the Hertz HZ01. This is a new Melbourne micro brand. They kind of popped onto the scene doing quartz, titanium, affordable, really nice, neat little watch. Again, looking forward to seeing what these guys come up with in the future. Yeah, this one is a little bit mobile. I keep it down to 10 slots. There's a bit of come and go, a bit of back and forth in this one, but yeah, some fabulous watches in here. I am sure you will agree. Next up, it is the Seiko box. Now, I churn and burn Seikos. I buy pretty much every one that they release, but I often sell them again shortly after the review in order to fund the next one. So these ones have hung around far, far longer than most of the Seikos. There are a couple of interlopers here. There are a couple of odd ones out. See if you can spot them before I tell you what they are. This is not one of them. The Seiko Saab 033, an absolute legend of a watch. 6R15 movement, Sapphire Crystal, Uncle Seiko Jubilee. I love this watch. I've worn it an awful lot. And when I put it on, it's a watch that I don't want to take off. So still definitely very much in the rotation. King Seiko, this one I picked up at the beginning of last year, beautiful, deep red wine dial. It made an appearance in the Shogurai video, a bit of a cameo in there. Again, lovely, lovely watch, but this one's on a bit of a shaky nail, has been for some time. This modded SRPE, Sapphire Crystal, and a strap code bracelet. Again, once I mod watches, I don't tend to wear them all that often, and this has fallen victim to that particular curse. Likewise, a 7002. Sometimes I forget I even own this watch. Again, I think that's an Uncle Seiko. Yeah, it's in an Uncle Seiko Beads of Rice 22mm bracelet that fits the SKX and the 7002. These were all the rage modern these a few years ago before they went up in price. The kind of ones with the sharks, etc. everywhere. Orient Kamasu, not a Seiko, definitely an interloper, definitely worthy of a place in this or any other collection, definitely still the best big brand dive watch you can buy for $200. It used to be the SKX, didn't it? This is an SKX 007J model, never left the house. The bracelet has left the house, but the head of the watch hasn't, and I've got a fresh Seiko Jubilee. Again, one of these kind of Safe Jenny watches. I'm sure I'm not the only person that has a, a Safe Jenny SKX tucked away for I'm not quite sure what reason. This one has left the house a lot, though. The 013, I think I picked this up in 2017, and I wore it a lot in 2017, 2018, 2019. Yeah, the bracelet scuffs and scratches, etc., are testament to that. Modded with a loom ceramic bezel insert and sapphire crystal. Likewise, this is a K model 009 that I modded, colored crystal, fitted Zoan strap, crown, sapphire, again, loom ceramic bezel insert. Very nice indeed. Likewise, the Irish Coffee Pressage. This disappeared for about six months and I couldn't work out where it was. And then I worked out where it was. I'd loaned it to Alistair Malloy, fellow YouTuber. He'd forgotten he had it as well, but he found it in a box and it was returned to me. And this little guy on the end here is also an interloper because it's not a Seiko. I bought what I thought was something completely different on AliExpress one time and it came in with a kind of fake Seiko dial. I put it in that jelly mold case. It's probably time that I remodded that one and put it in something slightly more appropriate. But Seiko, again, big, big brand for the channel. I've made 150, 160 videos on Seiko. So these ones are some of the best, the ones that I have chosen to keep in my personal collection. Talking of the best, here is what I think are 10 of the best watches you can currently buy on AliExpress. Hence, why I have them in my collection. Again, this is a section that could run entirely wild and indeed has done in previous occasions, but I've cut it down, I've thinned it out, and I've stuck to one watch per brand. So those brands being Boltony, Seastern, Steel Dive, Seagull, San Martin, Cadison, Lobini, Suges, Mercure, and Pagani Design. Not the only brands I'd recommend you look at, but yeah, if you're gonna go alley, these are 10 good places to start. And 10 good watches to look at as well. This is a cracker, this little Baltany military chronograph. I believe you can get this one now with a couple of different names in the dial. I got the Baltany one first and that one has stuck in my collection. Cracking little mecha quartz military style chrono. 
C Stern Docks a 600T, I think, or 200T lookalike. Uh, no originality whatsoever, of course, but I paid 120 US for this one. It is fabulously, fabulously well made for that price. Similarly, Steel Dive 1970, everybody should have one of these in their collection. Seiko Willard lookalike, 60 US dollars on sale. Now the Seagull 1963, I've had a 63 in my collection since about 2016, I think. I had one just about the same time as I started the channel. My girlfriend, who is now my wife, also bought me one of those. I don't think it was this one though, I think I bought and sold a few over the years, but a bit of a must for any collection, not just for the AliExpress collectors, that's a bit of a classic. San Martin makes some of the best watches on Ali, if not the best watches on Ali, some of the best watches you can buy for under $500. I've had a kind of rolling spot of a San Martin in my collection, I had their 39mm Explorer, then I had their 116 GMT, a couple of different versions of that. I recently swapped over for this beautiful red wave dial, just a cracker. Cadison C1032. I used to have two of these and a black one as well. Kept this silver dial one because I got a lot of black dial watches. Yeah, just a legend of a watch. These were under 50 bucks at one stage a few years ago. Lobini Interlaken Hangzhou 5000 caliber. Beautiful, beautiful micro rotor caliber, somewhat ruined by a date complication, but you can't have everything. Yeah, 200 bucks, I think I paid for that, an absolute bargain. Likewise, this Suges, it's a bit chunky and I thought this is a relatively recent addition, but look at that thing. There's a bit of Breitling in here, quite a lot of Breitling in here, but you don't pay $215 for a Breitling, I promise you that. And this watch is at the right time because I've been wearing it all week. I kind of forgot about it. I wore it a lot at Christmas time, took it up to Brisbane at Christmas and really, really enjoyed it. It's a Mercure Marathon lookalike, but it's better than the Marathon, I think. Manual wind movement, 20 mil lug width, so I've got it on a single pass strap at the moment. I've been wearing it all week because it has tritium tubes, insane after dark legibility. And I've said on more than one occasion, this is my favorite Pagani design. The Mission to Alaska Mark IV Speedy. Again, Seiko Mecha Quartz, well under 100 bucks. Really nicely done and a lot of fun because of the color. Not the most expensive watch box, I think. Probably there are individual watches in all of the other boxes that would cost more than this entire collection. But hey, that is part of the fun, is it not? That's why we collect, especially from AliExpress. And last but by no means least today, it's the Casio box. There already have been a couple of Casios up here, a square in my top box, the W10 in my memory box, but yeah, I love the brand. I've been buying them for years. I think this one I picked up on a trip to Singapore back in 2007, just showing how well these hold up. I think it's only on its second battery. This is the newest of them, the Manga Cassie Oak. Really enjoy this one, particularly in this blue colorway. I obviously have what I thought at the time was the best of the standard Cassie Oaks, certainly the most legible of the standard Casio Oaks. Really, really good watches and I do wear these regularly. Now this Casio Wave Scepter I picked up last year and I wore it an awful lot last year, took it on holiday a couple of times as well. However, I should have taken it off the day I was tinkering around with the inside of my PC because I put a huge, huge gouge on the mineral crystal. Haven't really worn it as often since then, unfortunately. Pair of calculators, I've got a pair of World Timer AE1200s, including a fully modified one with an SKX mod kit. Nice one there, sapphire crystal stainless steel case. Another Square G because you simply can't have enough Square Gs. This one, I think I picked that up in 2017. I sold it and then bought it back, the actual same watch from the guy that I sold it to a couple of years ago. Love these little dual time, I think that's an A800 dual timer here. I've had one of these in my collection for 12, 15 years or more. Likewise, MRW 200, I've had a bunch of these over the years as well. Kraken, dirt cheap watches, 20 US dollars or less. You can't really knock how much watch you get for that price. This one, W217H, you know, I wore that a lot a couple of years ago. I remember when I got really, really sick a couple of years ago, that was the only watch I wore for a week because I couldn't handle anything else. I just wanted something simple, and this is about as simple as it gets. Well, almost as simple as it gets. This is another SKX mod kit, or half an SKX mod kit. I had some leftovers after the last video, the giveaway I did with those guys, so I built up what was left into this kind of Frankenstein at Robocop without his helmet on look there, but love the brand. Yeah, I've still had a few relatively new pieces come in to this box this year. 
couple of new ones, one last year as well. But yeah, I haven't quite been retaining Casio. Is there another brand that I do tend to burn through? I buy the new releases and then move them on to buy the next one. But love Casio, always a special place in my heart. So there you have it, that's the half-term report then. Six boxes full of watches. Let's see how many of them can survive another six months until my official State of the Collection video in December. But what about this grail then? Well, I have a milestone birthday coming up next year. I'm not going to out myself, but it doesn't take a genius to work out which one that is. So I thought, perfect excuse to buy yourself a nice watch, Jody. Do I try to buy a Rolex? Do I go in and put my name down on something and see what turns up over the next 16, 17, 18 months or so until said milestone? Do you know what though? I looked through the current Rolex catalogue and I just thought, no. They discontinued the 39mm Oyster case, which was by far my favourite Rolex case. Having said that, I would love a GMT Master 2, and I've said it before, in some ways for me that is the ultimate watch. My interest in watches tops out at that level, I've got real no interest in the hot horology pieces beyond it. The Pepsi on a Jubilee, that's pretty much the pinnacle of watches for me, but that is 17 and a half thousand Australian dollars. I just don't think I'm in a position to spend that much money on a watch. Plus, I would never get one without having to buy a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't want and couldn't afford just to try and get that watch, you know, just to try and get a Pepsi GMT. So, too much money, no Rolex for me. And then I saw a watch on someone's wrist two weeks ago and I was like, ooh, what's that? And that was a Grand Seiko Spring Drive Cherry Blossom, the SBGA 413G to be precise. Now I have looked at and tried on a lot of Grand Seikos in their various showrooms and they are lovely, lovely watches. But the problem I have with most of them is I find them a bit too big and chunky. Hence when I bought one earlier this year, I bought the SBGN011, a 9F Quartz GMT. Now that watch has a really nice wearable 40mm case, it's relatively slim, it fits me perfectly I think. Well what do you know, when I looked at the specifications of the Cherry Blossom, it also has a 40mm case, a 47 lug to lug, a thickness of 12.8 plus it's made of titanium. I really enjoy titanium as a daily wear. My go-to watch at the moment is still my Citizen Chronomaster, at least in part because it's so light and comfortable on wrist. Plus, the Cherry Blossom is a spring drive. Grand Seiko are the only brand that does this, at least to that level. It's a kind of hybrid quartz mechanical system, much like Seiko's Kinetic, but not sh**. It's more accurate than a mechanical, but you never need to replace the battery like in a quartz, and you get that incredible smooth sweep of the second hand as a consequence of all of that technology. And I tried on the Cherry Blossom, my mistake, I tried it on, it fitted me like a glove, and the wheels began to turn. I'm sure you know what I mean, I looked back into my watch boxes and immediately started seeing dollar signs next to each watch. I was thinking, what if I sold that one, kept that one, moved that one over here, sold this one and so on. You start this process until you convince yourself that it's okay to buy the new watch. The problem is, the RRP of the Cherry Blossom is 9,850 Aussie dollars. Now, I've already started sending out a couple of probes and I've got two grand off that price of a new watch. Maybe I could have a look in Japan, try and buy a used one there through Baiyi or something. But I still haven't spent more than about three and a half grand on a watch to this point. So that would be a big, big move for me regardless. Now, I could sell my current Grand Seiko and put the money towards it. I could also sell the Red King Seiko that you saw. I reckon that would be three and a half grand between those two, but even so. Anyway, I'm not in a rush. Like I said, my birthday is not till next year. It's the next year that's the big anniversary. So I'll, I'll see how I go between now and then. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment. Is that an obscene amount of money to spend on a watch? Of course, it is an obscene amount of money to spend on a watch, but should I do it anyway? Well done for making it all the way to the back end of the video. Thanks for putting up with my rambling today. Why not check out my reviews of the Grand Seiko 
or my Chrono Master here or there. I'll see you again in the next one.